This conference will now be recorded. It isn't. We'll let these ladies sit down and then we'll start the meeting. It's 9 a.m. and we're starting our regular, well actually it's a special meeting of the Rome City Council uh, starting at 9 to 11 today. And we're going to have one subject today and it's basically Rome facilities. And we're going to have an invocation, pledge of allegiance, et cetera, and go straight to public comments. So, Cynthia, do we have a, are you the invocation lady? Lord Jesus, we just come before you this morning thanking you for this opportunity to um, deliberate the city's business. Father God, we just pray for this meeting that um, your grace and truth and love and mercy would descend upon us all as we deliberate city business. And I thank you for everybody that showed up here today. And Lord, we just thank you for this glorious day that we have. And we remember those that um, are not experiencing these types of days right now in um, over in Ukraine. And we just pray for uh, all of those people involved over there in Jesus name. Amen. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Under the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. We're going to move straight into our public comments and we ask that everybody treat everybody with respect. Let's have decorum, let's everybody keep seated and we'll move this thing on. Uh, Kathy, you're uh, not as not individual. Well, you read it then. I don't think we need to read it. All right, under public comments, uh, the council is not permitted to take action on or to discuss any comments made by the council at this time concerning an item not listed on the agenda. However, a city a council member or mayor may make a statement of fact regarding the item, make a statement concerning the policy regarding the item, and or may propose that the item be placed on the future agenda or direct the city administrator to co uh, contact the individual to address. If you are attending the meeting via live streaming and you would like to make a public comment, you must email the city secretary and it has the address prior to noon on Friday, March 18, 2022 and must identify each subject you plan to present to be recognized. If the writer of a public comment wants someone to read the letter, it will only be read by the city secretary and must be emailed prior to 4 p.m. on the day of the meeting. I guess that was actually yesterday. Public comments made in person require the speaker to submit the sign-up form to the city secretary prior to the meeting and the form must be must identify each subject the speaker plans to present. A statement of no more than three minutes may be made. There will be no yielding of time to another person. Comments should be directed to the entire council, not individual members. Engaging in verbal attacks are comments intended to insult, abuse, malign, or slander any individuals 
shall be cause for termination of time privileges and removal from council chambers. And as the mayor said, this today's event is nothing except uh, facilities. Thank you, Elaine. Okay, Shana, you're on. Who did you have first? All right, first we have a submittal from Lisa Ann Wilson. It says, attention Rome residents regarding the old city hall. As a long-term resident of Rome, 56 years, with strong family ties, I think we have I think we have a gold mine sitting close to my house. It is an old city hall, which was once a bank and had a historical plaque as well as the old bank safe. Rumor has it, possibly some bank robberies. Many of my old, many old town residents fondly remember this building and would like to see it renovated to its former splendor, but done economically and frugally. This could be the cornerstone to old town Rome Plenty of parking is available. This building is brought back to life by a general contractor with proper credentials that would meet safe that would meet state requirements, could handle approximately nine offices with a meeting room, kitchenette, and two bathrooms. This would save us from renting buildings that is too small and in, ingress and egress is very dangerous. This should be enough for at least the next five years and could serve as the cornerstone for Old Town Rome's historical area as pointed out in the master plan. The historical plaque is missing. Council, please locate and attach the sign to the building. Being that this week is spring break and many residents are unable to attend this meeting, I feel we need to extend an opportunity for those unable to attend to submit their ideas and thoughts to the mayor, council, and or city administrator. Then these ideas could be shared with the council. This is our future and we need as many thoughts, ideas, and information as we can get. In regards to the historical red brick building, AKA the senior building, and plans to take it down for parking, this is unimaginable and even insulting. This is one of Rome's iconic and historical buildings a few years back, a group of dedicated citizens remodeled the kitchen area with all new appliances and cabinets, drapes, and restroom renovation to accommodate the wheelchairs. This historical building has seen many senior luncheons prepared by citizens who are no longer with us. It was built to, the house, uh, it was built to house the Rome superintendent's family. There is a lot of history related to this building. In my opinion, with a little elbow grease and TLC, maybe a weekend community effort, and with the help of Public Works, this building could once again host senior citizen lunches and small meetings. Let's do our due diligence and use what we have. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for your time and listening to the citizens. And do not take this information lightly, but put this information to use. Lisa Ann Wilson, 240 West First Street. And next we have a submittal from Deborah B. Craft. We need to prioritize the order of fixing our buildings. I think we need to fix in this order. One, remodel old city hall. We borrowed the money to do this and instead spent it on remodeling a rental. We need to stop renting. We do not have high end finishes. It is an office, not someone's home. It can be nice, but do Sorry. but do it with responsible spending. Two, the police department. They are open 24-7. I priced the Leland building 40 by 50 for $30,000 installed. We would have to pour the slab and finish out the inside. If we did this, the existing impound yard could stay in the building they are in until it is finished. Pour the slab with the rough-ins for the plumbing and electric. It only takes one to two days for the install. Then we finish that out. Then we finish out the inside. When it is complete, they can move in and tear down the old building and that becomes parking. Three, the fire department since 2017, a lot has been remodeled in the fire department. They are there for training once a week and when they get dispatched, they are in and out. I'm not sure what all they need but it can be done. Upgrade electric plumbing as needed, remodel restrooms, etc. For Public Works, it was remodeled 
since 2017. Everything was brought up to code that they remodeled. Our public works employees mostly work outdoors with only the, direct, the director staying in the office. This puts the building on the bottom of the list. Five, community center. This one is on the bottom of the list because it can be used for meetings twice a month with no one working in there daily. Do one building at a time. Start on one building and work on it until it is finished. Only do other buildings if there's an emergency such as pipe bursting or something like that. It does not mean that you have to rebuild the entire building at one time. We can do it in stages, well, one, do one building at a time. Example, with the PD, we can pour the slab with rough ends. Months later, we can put the building. It may take a year or longer to do this, but it will not strain the budget, nor would we have to borrow money to do it. Spend smart when you are spending, when you are fixing the city-owned buildings, and we do not have to have the most expensive. These are offices, not homes. It is taxpayer money, not your own. Please start spending wisely and with caution. Thank you for your time. Deborah B. Crab, 360 West First Street. I'm sorry, West Second. That's all. <laughs> okay. Sean, do we have anybody online virtually? Sorry. She's got more here for online or for oh, in person. In person. In person. Do you want to go to online? Okay. Let's do online. I don't know if we have anybody online. Do you have anything turned in or online? The two that she read. One person. Okay, appreciate so, everybody coming out today. This is early and it's still cold, but when we leave, it may be 80 degrees. So, hey, life, life is happening. Well, do we not have anybody online? Okay. Is, well, there's one person online, um, but they didn't turn in a form. Oh, okay. So we'll unless that's unless that happens to be Miss B. Craft or Lisa Ann Wilson, which we've already read. Right. Okay. Um, Shannon, okay. start with the, we're going to now go to the people that are physically here. Okay, first is Terry Priest. Please state your name and address. Well, I'm glad you dressed for our meeting. You know? My name is Terry Priest, live at 216 Cheyenne Trail North from Rome, Texas. You may wonder why I'm wearing the funny hat. It's because I like to garden. And gardening entails planting things. I plant a lot of seeds. So today I'd like to plant a little seed for your facilities. Um, we have facility needs in all of the departments, administration, fire, police, and public works. Since the citizens don't want to pass a bond to pay for a municipal complex, we are back to a smaller scale city office project. I suggest we take one project at a time. It's like an old joke. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. I suggest we renovate Old City Hall on First Street. It's not what some of us wanted, but we do need more permanent office, uh, city office building. I understand the city needs to gather estimates from qualified companies before it can advertise for bids, and there's a cost for those estimates. Then after securing the funds, advertise for bids and see what it really is going to cost. The Wise County Appraisal District has square footage on that building at 2,750 feet. I also understand that remodeling costs for commercial buildings run between $200 and $300 per square foot. Using those numbers, we would expect to estimate repairs to be between $550,000 and $825,000. This is not a small sum, but the building is only a shell on a dirt floor. I've been inside and seen it. And then there's a side issue 
of limited parking. I heard earlier someone say that there's plenty of parking over there. Um, I differ with that. There's very limited parking. Then in the sources of funding, uh, this always costs money. There's nothing done without somebody paying for it and, and getting those funds. Number one on, on, my she on my sheet there is to sell the old school property. Probably not viable at this time because we don't have anywhere to put the fire department and public works. Number two, grants. Uh, hire a grant company. I know at the last council meeting, council members instructed the city administrator to look for a grant company, and I commend you for this. Number three, certificates of obligation. I believe the city should consider these as part of the funding. And four, current revenue increases from sales tax and real estate taxes. I know these are part of the budgeting process, but maybe allocate some of the increases to facilities. As for the fire, police, and public works, I don't have a viable solution at this time. Each of these departments needs a bigger, better, and functional facility. There's been discussion about selling the entire school property to pay for renovating some of the other city buildings, but there has to be a place to move the fire department and public works for this to happen. Until a new fire station and public works building is built, we simply can't sell the school property. Once that does happen, the proceeds from the sale of the school can be applied to the outstanding debt to the other facilities. Projects to renovate buildings or build new ones cost money. Our citizens seem to bury their head in the sand when it comes to paying for these projects. Do they feel like they, that any kind of debt is a curse? In my opinion, some kind of debt is not only necessary, but required. Otherwise, Rome will be left in the proverbial dust and never move forward to a more vibrant city. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Mayor, we um, might need to pause a moment and restart. Okay, so yeah. So let's restart. I'm sorry? So uh, in this meeting, and then go to the other one. <laughs> we're having technical difficulties. Oh, okay, we're. Uh, if you wanna, we're ready. Okay, there's no one there. Well, no, right now there's four. So. Um, do you want to go to them or you want to continue with in person? Is there anybody online that is wanting to speak? You call in. I mean, the call in is the same video. It's call in video, the same thing. Yeah. We're going to move on. Let's go back. If somebody shows up and they want to speak, we'll certainly let them do that. So we've had, uh, we're back to Shana. Who else do you have? Uh, next, I have Joe Hernandez. Good morning, Joe Hernandez. Uh, so used to being at work, 105 School Road, Mayor, Council, Staff. Good morning. I spent a little time on the Wise County website this this week, um, and it showed the city had 19 properties. I, I don't know if that's true or not, and some of the properties I have listed are not might or might not be viable options for sale. But I listed a few of them. One of them is the old bank building on West. 120 West First. The 2021 appraisal appraised it at 193,000, which I'm sure this year's appraisal is going to bring it in a little bit higher. Uh, the PD is at 156,000. This property here, the old school property, is at 380,000. Um, there's also 
It says track 17 on highway 114 39 acres for 484,000. I don't know if that's in Bywell. Bywell. Okay. okay. It's just some of the properties. It's a park. It's dedicated as park. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. these are just some of the ones I've listed that yeah. I don't know, like I said, if they're viable options or not. Uh, there's also Block 26, which is a five acres for 137. Uh, Ellis Homestead, it said 10 acre lot for 231,000. And then there's uh, 10 acres on North Suite for 225. I don't know if that's the 10 acres behind Chisholm or not. Um, it may be the 10 acres that sent you a notice at Prairie Point. It's looking, it's is that 10 acres up there. It just there? says, um, it just says North Suite Street. It doesn't say what. Well, ten, I mean, we have 10 acres on uh, Hickory. Yeah, okay. it's part of Prairie Point. Yeah, I didn't and, show that on the on the CAD. Anyway, all these I added up, and it came up to $1.9 million. And that's 2021 appraisals. Uh, my, my idea of what we should do with the city facilities is I think we should build you. I, think, I believe the gentleman said that last meeting is let's build a new public safety building, police fire, with the option of adding on City Hall at a later time. I think City Hall is in a place right now, yes, we're renting, but yes, it's it's good to go for now. Um, that would be my option. Um, also, if we build it big enough, maybe in some future, um, in the future plans that Wise County EMS would be able to rent out part of the building, um, to rent out part of the building, the last fire department I was associated with, that's what happened is the county rented half the building and they put a medic unit in it. Um, also the PD, they would have a common lobby and a common training room where you guys could have city council meetings where they can have training. Um, I think it's in the in the works to have 24 hour oper operations and that would be the perfect time to go ahead and add in dorms and stop band-aid fixing all these things around here. Um, also, with the new PD and a new training facility with Chief Debus leading us in the right direction, Rome can be, has the potential of being the best PD in Wise County. So those are some of my options. I think what, I think we should shoot for another bond. Those that are 65 and over are locked in, so it would be on the backs of us that are under 65, and I'm willing to take that, but we need to build something city around something and i think that would be a good start i uh, just put everybody under one roof thank and you joe maybe yeah. don't go away yeah. uh where would would you propose we do that? I, mean, I don't know if you guys can negotiate some yeah. kind of property with rolling v or something that's up on the freeway um, and then at some point sell all this property that we can pay back the bond I and mean, that could be an option i just don't know yeah, good option. So, Appreciate your thoughts. And then the uh, last thing is for, for Dinsmore Group to build a little a little shop somewhere close to one of their facilities, not to leave them out, but something that's a little bit cheaper and smaller for these guys. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Next we have Kathy Coffey. Hello. My name is Kathy Coffey. I live at 1102 Mount Lane, Rome, Texas. Um, I'm just here to discuss the meet and greet on Tuesday. It's going to be at 215 Country Road, 4651, which is Humble Hall. I want to invite everybody in town to come and meet your candidates. Okay. We're going to have um, the city of Rome. No, actually, you can't, you can't, you can't do that. that. This you is for facilities only. Oh, but I can't I, do that? I may read this at the end. Okay, can which I? Which is the same thing. Can I put these on the table, though? Sure, and that's you know, and I will probably once we close the meeting. Okay. I'll probably. I'm going to blame it on Valerie. She's yeah, not telling well, me to do it. Hey, she should. She should have come to defend you. She's sick. Oh no! But anyhow, I will address this after the end of the meeting. Okay. We cannot do it under the guidelines okay. for the meeting. All right. But thank thanks, you, Kathy. Uh huh. China, anyone else? Okay, that's all I have. Okay.
while you're up, just stay. <laughs> we have Randall Loftus. Yes. 315 West Morris Street. I've been told a pretty patient man. But there was one time in the late 80s where that summer I spent a year in Omaha. Ooh. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, my observations are that um, the city government here is overwhelmed between wastewater issues, freshwater infrastructure, outdated facilities, city, state, and federal regulation, history of an inability to maintain city infrastructure and facilities, community discord, and impending out of control growth. In Waynoka, Oklahoma, they had a situation where similar, their downtown was in really bad shape. And they had a group of uh, high school, former high schoolers at a reunion and uh, they really were hurt by everything that was going on. So they developed, they, they formed a uh, community development corporation, a nonprofit, and they went in and purchased these buildings one at a time and repaired them and leased them out. And there are other stories like that all around this country. Uh, got a couple of website examples I can share with you later. And then uh, as, early, as re recently as uh, the 17th of this month, uh, in the Wise County Messenger uh, mentioned that the Boyd Council was be holding a public hearing on the creation of a tax increment reinvestment zone. And so there's, I think I mentioned that last time. Um, but a community development corporation uh, typically will be a nonprofit. Goals are community driven. The goals can be large or small. Uh, they have a board of directors, community members. And did you know that a nonprofit can own a for profit company? There are some stipulations on that. It has to be. The nonprofit must own a majority of the stock. Uh, for profit profits are paid back to the nonprofit as dividends. And within the nonprofit, those dividends have to be redirected back into nonprofit efforts. So that makes 49% of the for profit stock available for public investors and uh, direct contributions to the nonprofit would be tax deductible. Um, if Rome were to have something like that, uh, there would be a selection of a project or goal. Uh, we need to do some fundraising, that nonprofit would. Potentially establish for profit to attract private investment. And uh, I thought of a project to, which has already already been mentioned remodel the Rome City office on First Street. And how would that nonprofit go about that? One way would be for the city of Rome to sell the First Street property to a nonprofit for the sum of $1. And then the city of Rome would rate, waive all permitting and related construction fees. City of Rome would waive festival fees for fundraising purposes. And once the construction is complete, the city of Rome could rent the remodeled city hall until the loans are paid, and then the city of Rome could have it back. The rent collected would go back to any private investors 
and a portion of the rent going to a nonprofit, which could then be used for the next selected community project. Another goal would be for this type of a nonprofit to focus on using local companies and labor for the project. So just an idea and uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. We normally don't do this, but is there anybody else with any comments? This is a meeting. Oh, Elaine has her hand up. I'm I, I sorry. I just wondered if um, if, he, if Brenda wouldn't be willing to make us a list of what you just described. I was trying to. Yeah, I, I've got a PowerPoint, and uh, some of you have a question. Yeah. 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 That, that list of uh, the different steps that would be taken after about the third step, I couldn't write fast okay. enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, and there's a couple of links in the presentation. Some pretty informative websites. Right. It is, and but I, I loved it. I loved the way that you describe that. You use language that I think everybody could understand, and. Uh, it, it just made sense, but for us to better understand that, if I could just have that. Yeah. Thank you. If, if it's easier on you, you could always send it to um, Cynthia and she can distribute it to everyone. I think that would probably be the easiest way. Okay, anyone else before we go to council comments? I'm the first one that everybody hates because I'll fire y'all, but you know, how have, how has city council communicated with our community? I mean, truly, if people are what, and this is maybe meant for people watching, this room should be full of people. I mean, we should have all of Roman here. Um, so I, I would want to know how you have communicated in the past and maybe you know, if something's going to be set in stone, how you might communicate during that period of now and set in stone. I mean, and forgive me for saying, or whatever. Donna. I'm one of those ignorant people. Yeah. Uh, and really, this, we're really here to talk about Well, yes, but, but what I'm saying, is, what you're if, saying. You, if you're going to, I think the new school is wonderful. I think it's going to raise taxes, and I think we have to vote for a bond. But you need to make sure the people know about the bond, what it means. Well, and um, and, and new buildings, and, and building them another aluminum building, I think that's horrible. Well, these are just my personal thoughts, but our police department, our first responders need good buildings. Now, if it's not the school, teach me, teach room. That's all I got to say. It just is, we, I need to be more educated. Donna, it's, I'm about finished with my term. And all I can say is thank you. <laughs> no, nope, thank you. But you know what? All I can say is thank you for coming to the council meetings and start putting in your input. Come to all the council meetings, let your neighbors know and bring them. And it's getting us getting out to the public whenever I'm at the Dollar General. It's, hey, came, come and bring them to it. And that's all I can say. And okay. writing down and calling Cynthia. That's all it is. And emailing Cynthia and letting her know. And she's the one in charge. So and I'm, that's it. I'm 70 plus, so the taxes aren't going to hurt me, obviously. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate the one that said he'd be willing to pay. We need to do that, but uh, education, and I like our little town, and I think our place deserves more than an aluminum building. So, okay, thank you. And most of y'all here, if not all of you know, we have two council meetings a month normally. <laughs> it is the second Thursday of the month, and again, if needed, on the fourth Thursday of the month. Look at our Rome webpage. The date stuff and all that are on there. If you're 
have a question and you're not sure about the next meeting, call our, our city hall and they can tell you when it will be. Okay, anybody else have comments? Okay, I think we have some council people with comments. Do we have somebody up there you think again? Okay. Uh, Ashley, did you have some comments for the meeting? This is just um, what I did was I just put a summary sheet together. Um, as you all know, and, and many who have been attending know, um, the council has considered several different um, options and looked at the facilities and the conditions of the facilities. Um, and this is just a summary sheet. So um, I will say there is a web page that was created with all things facilities and that was created prior to um, the first uh, forum on facilities back in January. And on that page, you can go to our, um, uh, you can go and see the minutes, all the minutes, all the presentations, all the different council meetings that um, the facilities were discussed is housed on that page. So you can see all that information at once. Um, again, all this does is it lists our facilities up there and how we categorized what the different issues with each of our facilities is. So we've got structural, roof, mechanical, electrical, plumbing. Um, we uh, Are they ADA compliant? Um, we talk about the current size and projected size needed, um, five to 10 years. So that's, um, you can just look at the top um, police department, um, pretty much um, those are all the different issues. And we can go into detail of some of those if you wanted, but again, it is all on the website. Um, and the fire department, same thing, pretty much um, almost all the buildings have um, several different items wrong with them. So um, that's all that is. We do have, um, we did, uh, I didn't bring all the pictures, but there are some pictures that I included in this. Again, this is all on the website. Um, Sean, do you just wanna just review really quickly some of these as you scroll through? This is the uh, breaker panel at the police department's behind a wall. It does not meet cold, it's undersized. Um, this is actually into their evidence room. Again, you have to have easy access to a electrical panel uh, from my understanding from a um, from the building official. So this does not meet cold. And so all this stuff will have to be removed and relocated in a different location. If uh, uh, Also the PD bathroom. Um, again, uh, this doesn't meet ADA compliant. Also, it's only one one restroom uh, for the officers that they have, um, and so this is, a, as you can see, there's there's not a place. It's not wide enough uh, uh, for that. And also, again, one restroom, and the doors here, um, as tape measure, if you can see, there's a minimal width for ADA. These uh, doors do not meet the 32 inches, so all the doors would have to be uh, uh, removed and, and the entryways would be rewidened. Re uh, this is the uh, fire department. Uh, the door entry would have to be uh, removed and, and widened. Again, this is also an ADOT block, so you have to cut the uh, concrete blocks and reset a frame and then uh, install proper uh, uh, handrails and, and, and stuff for here. And it might meet the ADA, the 60, uh, but it's going to be very tight. Uh, here is the secondary bathroom. Uh, that would, uh, because again, uh, the fire department, that, that was only one restroom for the fire department when they do have training on us, that they also have females that also work there. So this is a restroom that needs to be brought up to standards for, uh, for the dual purpose where you have male and female and also to accommodate the, uh, how many, uh, Firefighters, they do have time. Uh, again, they could have up to 10 to 12, even more firefighters. Correct, 20, almost sometimes 20 firefighters during training. And right now they have one toilet. Again, it does not meet the ADA standards. So again, this is concrete block. The concrete block would have to be cut out and reset. Uh, insulation, as you can see, the insulation has fallen apart. And inside of the bay areas, um, you can see 
extension cords don't meet the electrical code that power uh, different parts of the building. And so there's, elect there's actually electrical cords just strapped, you know, right, strapped across the, uh, um, yeah, strung, whatever. Uh, this is the old city hall. Again, uh, breaker boxes. Uh, there's not even a weather head outside, so the, the all electrical, basically this building will have to be gutted and, and redone. Um, the flooring, this is a dirt floor, so uh, it had to be determined if you want to uh, uh, pour concrete in here, bring the floor up, put a false floor, how you want the ceilings, the um, AC, um, I think all the AC has to be replaced because it's out of uh, compliance. And, and so here's your bank vault, you know, but again, how does this building want to be re redesigned? And again, the cost of pouring concrete inside this building. Uh, and also here is the bathroom here. We have one bathroom for a public meeting. It does not meet ADA standards. Uh, so this restroom would have to be brought up. And also uh, by com compliance, you have to have two restrooms in here at the public facility. So a secondary bathroom would have to be placed. Uh, and I think uh, the architect said the secondary bathroom will be have to be placed in the room next to it where the uh, closet is. Uh, again, uh, not compliance uh, with the uh, hot water heater. Hot water heater is not supposed to sit on the ground uh, in the way it should be in the cabinet by itself. And also, this is uh, if we do have uh, a kitchen, if we do use this as a kitchen uh, that needs a commercial vent hood, the fire suppression system is not up to standards or compliance would have to be replaced. The senior facility, um, there's no, uh, it has to be uh, hardwired exit doors and smoke detectors. Um, problem with electrical, um, I don't have the pictures of that, but uh, the roof here is uh, from what I was just told by the electrical people. They will not drill through the roof because that's eight uh, asbestos panels. Uh, and so, and then two, there's no room uh, to actually get up in the attic to run electrical through there. And also there's no, uh, and so you have two options is what they've done in the past. You'll see that they are now running conduit on the outside of the building. And so they would have to rerun conduit or more additional conduit throughout the facility. Um, they have a kitchen here. Well, this is a commercial building. Uh, a, a residential vent hood is not legal. You have to have a, a vent hood, a commercial vent hood um, for that. Since it is a public facility, it has to be a commercial vent hood. Um, the windows uh, to be compliant with some of the uh, energy efficiency that would have to be replaced, all the windows to be energy efficient. Um, again, the biggest issue too is electrical. Um, there's no, uh, we had to remove a, a freezer out of there because there's no ground to a lot of the electrical outlets. Um, and so some of that stuff is not grounded. And so it does not meet electrical code. Yeah. We have to get it tested, but the electrician that got up in there, he, got, he, he stopped when he was looking at it. He goes, I'm not going to mess with this because this is the best and all that stuff. So we have to, we'll have to do more research on that, but that's what we were told. Two, there's also when you walk in the, 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 from the kitchen, to, there's not this picture of it, but between the kitchen and the meeting room, there's a sub electrical panel that sits up there. That would have to be replaced, and that's the biggest cost is because they would have to rewire everything through the outside. So you'd have to have basically more conduit outside the building going to different directions because they can't go through the roof or they have to go up underneath the, uh, the floor. But that's kind of a little rundown of that. Uh, there's not pictures of uh, public works. Public works was done uh, from my understanding from the, uh, uh, from the guys in public works. However, nothing was inspected. There are some uh, electrical hot water heaters that were not uh, run properly conduit wise. The bathroom doesn't meet ADA. And so there are some issues in there. Again, we didn't dig deep into it. Yes, is they, they did build it, but it was never inspected. Oh, and, to, and also too is that we're not uh, meeting standards because you're supposed to have uh, two ingress and egress to the outside. Uh, one of our doors enters into the bay. And so we actually had to cut a hole into the building uh, to enter the offices because you cannot just have just one exit door because right now the, our entry door enters into a bay that's not uh, compliant with the fire code. So um, we had. 
So in, in our to, to enter to enter our offices, we have oh, to roll up the door. You're not talking about seeing the door. No, oh, I said I said public works. Okay. So so public so works, you have to roll up our door, right. entry door, and to enter our office, you go through the bay. Right. And there's only one exit door to the outside. You have to have two egresses okay. outside, and so I, we have to cut a wall. We or you know we have to cut a hole in the uh, the concrete wall to make an uh, additional exit for a proper egress and ingress. And that's it on that. Yeah, I just, um, I didn't put them all again. I would just, um, everybody who's listening and, and y'all, I mean, it is on the website. Um, the There was an entire, a lot more pictures um, on the website and um, estimates of funding of potentially what it would cost to prepare. Um, so these are just some of the things that council has considered over the last several years. Anything else for me today? Okay, Ashley, did you have something? I suggested that we got this building appraised. Did you ever get the building appraised or this building? Yeah, we talked about that last at the last meeting. But it has been done to let the citizens know. Well, I mean, it was an executive session that we talked about it that I gave you guys that information. And that was on the total building, including the old school and the attachment here, and not the senior building. It was it was the entire property. Do you want me to share that information? I mean, that's. A <laughs> No, I don't yeah. think we need to. Okay. That, that would put us at some type of a negotiation problem. Should we get to the point where we're trying to sell the building? So, yeah. no, I mean, it's like when you're trying to sell, you know, real estate, you want to you want keep, to keep the information to yourself. Well, I understand. Okay, anything else? Ashley, what else did you have? Looks like I'm the only one that brought the <laughs> facilities report from the last time. I'm with um, uh, Terry. Thank you for bringing that. That I suggest we renovate the old city hall. Um, so I'm with. I agree with you, Joe. Surprisingly, I agree with you on some of the properties. I do suggest that we sell, not all of them, um, but there is one that uh, is on Morris that needs to be sold that I brought up um, that is was suggested to be a park. Um, there's residents that want to buy it. So that is one. Um, so um, I think that is an idea for you. Um, I don't, but not all of them, but there is some. So thank you for bringing that up. So, but I don't know if there's anything else. I mean, Okay, Sam, do you have anything? I do. Um, I know that uh, Sean prepared some estimates of what it would take to renovate each of the individual uh, buildings. Um, God, what was that, two years ago? Something like that. And it came out to, I don't remember the total, but I think it was something like $10 million. I can't remember. But while you're looking that up, um, perhaps what we need to do, oh, okay. Perhaps what we need to do is instead of, uh, when we tried to save some money by having uh, Mr. Dinsmore do it, perhaps we need to create a, uh, an official, get some engineers in here and have uh, official estimates of what it would cost to do each building, okay? So that we identify the minimum, right? Are you finding it? Okay, I'll let you. Um, identify the minimum that we need to bring every building up to code, okay? 
nothing fancy, nothing elaborate, whatever the minimum is to come up to code. Then get estimates of what it's going to cost to do that for each building. Okay? Um, we're, it, that's going to cost us money because we're going to have to have, I mean, we're going to have to specify what is the minimum. We're going to have to come back and, you know, price out our engineers. Uh, what is the process? Would we get Kimley Horn, our engineering company, to make those estimates? Well, let me, I'm, I'm, and I just pulled up the first slide of, the, uh, of that, and I'd like to read these assumptions. Um, so from a high level, I mean, it would require an architect, structural engineer, to develop plan specs um, estimates based on a thorough evaluation um, in order to get an actual bid. Um, so, and that would require an RFP process. Um, what we put together, I mean, we did have um, some, uh, uh, a contractor come in and give us some estimates, very low level estimates. Um, but I mean, it's, it's going to take more than just that because there's more than that that's going on. I mean, it, unless you're just saying to go into each, are you, let me ask you this, are you saying to go into each building and estimate what it would cost to bring it up to code? Because yes. that's okay. Yes. That's what we did. We have uh, we had two or three, and I'd have to pull those to see exactly what they are. We did do that, um, and let me see. But are you asking right now to bring them all up to code, and then well, that uh, yeah. I don't, but are you asking to spend the money, bring them all up to code, and then wait and build something new? Because that's a lot of money. What? I, I realize we're talking about a lot of money. What I'm talking about is um, this estimate, this yes. very estimate. I have heard too many people for the last two years say that they have no confidence in this estimate. All right. Okay. It's a lot of money. Yeah, it's yeah, no it's confidence. A lot of money. Right. It's, 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 it is barrels of money. But I think the biggest problem we have with it is, for some reason, I don't know why, there's no confidence in this estimate. Okay, so what we need is an estimate that people have confidence in. Okay. Okay, because when we start comparing prices, because I know that when the council was comparing prices, we were looking at, we had confidence in this estimate. We're looking at the roughly 10 million bottom line. And we talked about the municipal complex and we were thinking, okay, this is the cheapest possible way to go. Okay, that was the assessment that we had. People didn't like that. I get that. Okay, people didn't like that. But I think the reason they didn't like it was because they had no confidence in the estimate. Okay? There's no confidence in the estimate. So we need to find a way to get the estimate with a high level of confidence so people will understand the police department's going to cost X number of dollars. Fire department's going to cost Y number of dollars. Old City Hall is going to cost, you know, n number of dollars. We need a number, okay, that people have confidence in, that they don't sit there and say, oh, well, y'all just pulled $10 million out of the hat because you didn't want to do them individually because you wanted the municipal complex. I get it. Okay. We need a confidence boost here. We need something to give people confidence so that we can all get on the same page, Okay. What we don't need, what the city does not need, is we come to a decision and then all of a sudden we have huge conflict again. Okay? We need to get on the same page. We need to agree that this is where we're going, this is the plan, and this is what's the best way to go. So that if we get a certificate of obligation, people don't start screaming, oh my gosh, they're increasing my taxes for something they don't need. Or if we put a bond forward, it's because... Okay, we're going to let you vote on it, but it's going to be something that everybody agrees on, so everybody would vote for it. We need to build the confidence in the plan, okay? Well, and I believe that that's the whole point of why we're having this meeting, to get input from the citizens, to get confidence. Well, you know what? You should have gotten more people here to get the confidence, but it wasn't advertised, and it wasn't really pushed by you and our city administrator put it out on Facebook and go in. Let's get them all here. 
So there wasn't a lot of confidence and your bond wasn't a lot of confidence and getting our facilities. Yes, we have some that Mr. Priest and Joe gave a lot of good ideas because I said we should have went to Rolling V and put something out there by Rolling V and said, you know what, can we build something over there and can we negotiate and put a building on Rolling V's land? That would be a good negotiation for a building. But right now, I would like it in the old city hall building. That's where I've always asked for it. So I think with Miss Priest, doing a grant would be the best idea. So, and then possibly looking for, a, you know, selling a piece of property and building something for our police, our public works, and maybe, you know, for a fire. But our buildings are not that bad. Our buildings are really not that bad in the conditions for temporary until we get something up and going for I don't know how long but hey do it do it uh, and you know uh, what you're saying do it um, what, uh, you know We, can we, so this says $275 per square foot for construction costs. Do we know what that includes? I mean, what does that involve? Well, so this is, I mean, and Mr. Priest alluded to it as well, um, but I mean, what we have to do is when you're looking at um, remodeling and bringing a facility up to code, you're going to use an industry standard and he's he like you said two to three hundred um and actually when i was talking when we were doing this i was talking to the architect and at that time the average square foot was 325 um but we just you know kept it low so um these are when you say confidence i understand but we have to also be realistic um, about what these are going to what the cost will be to bring a building up to code um, so that, I mean, that, these are based on industry standards and that's what architects use. I mean, um, now what does it entail? Um, I understand, I mean, we'd have to get in there and get to details about that. A lot of these buildings though, um, part of the challenge is, is the concrete blocks, walls that we have. Um, for all of these facilities here. So the community center and the fire and, and uh, public works as well. So that's, you know, when you're talking about widening a wall that's got concrete blocks, it's not just, uh, you know, sheetrock. <laughs> um, so there's just a lot of different factors. And yes, we do add contingency costs because you just never know. And unfortunately, um, right now with the the right the rising cost of everything i mean from a week you're going to see a cost i mean the inflation and we felt it in our uh, solid waste uh, water you know in our uh, uh, services is seven and a half percent cpi right now i mean that that's like incredible so um, the cost of things is continually going up. So these are estimates. I like, I mean, I like what you're saying, Council Member Eason, with confidence. It's just, I think in our economy right now, it's hard to get that confidence um, with things really going. I mean, they're just crazy as I've seen in my lifetime. So well, our only issue is that, so it says that it's a million dollars and there are multiple people saying it it's not going to cost that much. It's not going to cost that much. And that's why I understand what Council Member Eason is saying. If you have all these people saying it's not going to cost that much, we've got to figure out how to say, yeah, this is this is how much it's going to cost and this is why. You know, not just throwing out numbers and saying, oh, these are the numbers because evidently people don't believe those numbers. Well, and then, well, the other thing I would say is it is going to be, um, and, a, and a lot of people have said it today, I mean, it is going to be, a, you know, a matter of priority. I mean, if, if um, you know, you're wanting to take it, you know, one step at a time and, and um, be conservative in how you move forward, then it's going to be um, identifying, I mean, 
I think council needs to determine, okay, what are the priorities? Maybe let's um, start there. What are the priorities? How are we going to phase in um, fixing all these buildings or is fixing the building what we're going to do? I mean, you have to take that holistic approach and look at all our buildings, look at the land, look at the different options. But at some point when you kind of get that pathway forward, then it's going to be a step at a time and you might not be able to do everything. Um, you know, I will, I will say from a staff perspective, um, the priorities are those buildings that are in the worst condition. Um, and so as much as, you know, I'd love to be able to redo the city hall and move in there as city staff, um, I think, you know, police and fire and, and public works are um, the priorities in the condition that they're in. At least we have, it is being rented, but as somebody said, and I think maybe Mr. Loftus, it might have been you, um, but somebody, uh, we are paying rent. So we're, we, we, we're getting property tax on the building that we're in. We are paying rent, we're, but we're getting property tax. If we owned it, we wouldn't be. Um, but so, um, I mean, as far as realistic and confidence, I mean, we've gotten, you know, like I said, we did have somebody come out and, and look at a couple of the buildings. And if you're just wanting to, uh, bring the existing buildings up to code, then that's one scenario. If you're wanting to sell some property and build new, then that's going to be another scenario. Um, as, as far as, um, you know, getting land over in Rolling V, I mean, staff has been having some conversations about that. Um, we don't have anything uh, to bring to the council at this point. Um, but that staff is working on that, so we just don't have anything to bring at this point. Okay, Elaine, you're next in the row, if you have anything. Have you ever known me to not well, have, had you to know. Ask it in that manner, you know, yeah. be nice. Um, I, I just appreciate everybody's comments today, taking the time to come and for us to actually have a chance to brainstorm about, you know, it, it's a lot of information to take in and try to find the right path. And um, so I would just say that uh, I do believe that the common, the common agreement that we do have is First Street. Uh, not, not, you know, I, I don't talk this kind of stuff with Terry, but it was, he was on board with, with that all on, on his own, hat and all. <laughs> and um, and I, I don't know, even when we did the survey a couple of years ago of just the city council, it was unanimous that we wanted to do that, that building. And so I, I don't think that's even open for discussion any longer. We need to do, the, do that building. The, the bigger question is, even even that is is that is it a number one priority or is it a number four priority depending on the needs of the other buildings and what kind of health and safety issues we have with the rest that's to be determined and i've said this before many times it is the one building that we i think we have the best opportunity for grant funding but that too is not at our on our schedule we have to that's why i've been pushing uh, pretty hard about we need to get a grant company on board that's their job to know about all the opportunities that are out there which ones fit with our situation what is the timeline for those grants uh, they don't have the same uh, physical year uh, set out whenever they let these grants. They can be any time of the year at all. And how does that fit with what we're trying to do? And so um, I, I think that's a, a no-brainer in that we do need to move forward with that, even if that means the first step is let's, let's be looking at the possibilities of a grant company. Uh, the mayor has pointed out several times that, uh, that once you get get them on board they're doing all the work but we don't have to pay them unless we get a grant 
and then they do the administrative part of that. So up front, it's a it's a it's a good deal for us. Um, I do not have the ability, um, and even though that I've written grants and all that kind of stuff, it was mo mostly for educational purposes, and I had a huge at at to assist me was a huge uh, group that uh, was state related that 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 was their focus in the educational arena and so they would come and help us uh, do that process and to help us with that administration uh, which that's not what we have here and I, I wish I, I wish I did have the total ability and the stamina but I do not have the have that ability to look at hundreds of opportunities for stunt us uh, for that and to decide which one is the best. Will I help any way that I can? Well, you know me better than that. I'll do all that I can, but uh, we, we need to get over that Elaine's not going to be able to write those grants and Elaine's not going to be able to administer those grants. We, we have bigger and bolder dreams here and it's not just for that building. We have grant opportunities for all the things that we want to do for this city. So that's why I'm in favor of that. The, the other thing about First Street is that the parking that we have to think about is this. There has to be, a, and correct me if I'm wrong, there has to be a 50 foot area on the outside so that uh, we can get um, fire lanes around that building. And then when you do that, then we've got that well that's back there, which is going to be brought back on uh, line for us. And there's certain things that we have to be careful about around that to keep it in good uh, condition and not cause any damages to that. So I don't think that there's as much parking as some people think. I know the Church of Christ has been very gracious in the past to let us park there, but I think we need to look at some other options and not rely on local churches to be our parking lot. Um, so, um, yeah, I think that, that we need to move forward on that one. The other buildings, we have to make a decision so we know what to do. And that is, are we going to rebuild somewhere else? And, uh, you know, we, we, it's no secret, uh, Rolling B, PMB, whatever you want to call them, they may be our opportunity for a different site. We don't, we don't have any, uh, anything firm on that because we have not uh, said that's what we wanted to do, but we have to make a decision. If we, re if we repair all the buildings that are here that we, we were just talking about, then what are we going to do with that? What are we going to do with that old building? Are we just going to sit there and let it rot more and be a bigger hazard? We can't just leave it there. We either have to use it, lose it, or sell it. And if we're going to sell it, then we need to be contrary to what Mr. Eason has suggested is I don't think we need to be investing money on getting a real number if we have no intention of using the the other buildings that are here. But what when we make our decision on whether to rebuild wherever that might be, we have to consider what are we going to do with this. If we're not going to sell this property, then we have to do something with it. And that's that's a part of the plan, uh, and and we we do have some numbers that are high level numbers on what it would cost to to tear it down, and um, you know that's just a, another cost we have to think about. So I do think we have to decide where do we want to spend our time and energy, and that is making the decision: is do we keep what we have, get rid of what we're not going to use, and and come up with that the bigger plan and then do it step by step or do we spend some time 
trying to negotiate with some of our developers and to go the new facility way. Um, I don't have the answer for that. It's going to take everybody, and you know, we have to look at that. But I'm not, I'm not so keen on uh, spending money to have uh, additional folks looking at the the buildings and trying to come up with a new number because we already have some numbers. Maybe we just need to change that for square footage from uh, 250 to 300. We can't make it be perfect because as a municipality, we cannot just go out and get competitive bids to start with. That's not how, by law, that we can operate. We have to come up with a guesstimate, estimate. We have to come up with a list of what exactly needs to be done. And then we have to have the money for that estimate in hand, ready to spend before we can go get truly competitive bids. Competitive bids are the last thing that we do in moving forward. It's the final step, but we've got to have the money. So it's not like at your house where you can, oh, I have a plumbing problem, so I'll call a plumber. He comes over and tells you what, what needs to be done, and here here's the bid to get it done. We can't do that here. And so uh, that complicates things. I want us to think also about uh, we need to re we decide to remodel or rebuild. Uh, parking uh, is one of the things we have to consider for whatever we decide. And then we have to think about the longevity of, the, of our efforts. Are we looking to only renovate for a five-year process? Or are we looking at 20 years? And so as we look at this, that's, that's part of what we and as much as it costs, my gosh, I wouldn't think that that would be a, something we'd want to do as a five-year plan and then say, oh, then, then we'll, we'll regroup. Gosh, that'd be scary. Uh, so I am I am definitely in favor of moving forward as, as much as we can uh, and be smart about the money and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think that uh, uh, Lisa... And her, she repeatedly says, you know, we, we, we have to be smart with our money. And uh, she's not the only one that feels that way. And I don't know one person that doesn't feel that way. So um, I, I'd like to see us move forward with First Street. But we, I just, you know, I just realized that we, we have to look at grant money. It has to be a part of what we do. And that has to be a part once we decide where we're going to go. We need to be looking at grant money for every step of the way in any fashion that we can. If we're going to sell money, if we're going to sell property, then that needs to be earmarked for facilities, in my opinion. And uh, because it'll be a process. And if we're going to sell, we've got to have new facilities for the, for the group to move into before we can sell. So it's a long process and it's, uh, it's tedious. And, um, gosh, I wish I could win the lotto and make it all right. <laughs> okay. Have anything else, Michelle? I would also like to get the old city hall renovated. But I think that our priorities also are the, the buildings that are occupied. Um, police and fire and public works all need something done to those buildings. And I don't know if we just continue put a, putting a Band-Aid on there or how we get the money. Uh, Council Member Priest was you know, she's eloquent in saying, this is what we need. And, and I believe that, I also believe that's what we need. We need the, the existing buildings that are occupied to be fixed or sold and buying a new one. But they need to be somewhat fixed because you know, they're occupying these buildings that are falling down around them, contrary to what Council Member Majors is saying. Um, they're, they're in horrible shape, and we're doing nothing. We're, we're doing nothing. <laughs> we just need to figure out what, what to do right now and then make this long-term goal of what to do in the, in the future. And, and I like the, the property on, you know, somehow getting property from Rolling B 
to to you know put a municipality or a municipal building there. Um, I think what else was it that I was going to ask? I don't remember. I'll have to come back. Okay. <laughs> Josh, what do you have? Thank you. So. Um, Several people have already mentioned it. I think we're all in agreement on the old city hall it needs to be renovated, but we do have other occupied buildings that we obviously need to take care of first. Um, so in the next meeting, I think if we can do an after action uh, agenda item on today, that way we've got time to think about it. I think we need to sit down and prioritize the buildings that we need to look at and set something in place. Fire department is the first one we're going to look at. Second is police department, and then we need to put actions or plans in, in place to take actions on. We've been talking about this stuff for years. We need to start taking action on these things. Uh, Mr. Loftus, thank you for what you brought forward today. Um, uh, I think the whole council did not even consider your ideas uh, that you brought forward. So I think that's going to be some great information to look into, um, hopefully, and, and, and talk about going forward. Um, Donna, I think you're right with the, we need more involvement in the city council meetings. Um, I know we've all been pushing for it, but you know, as new members come like you and, and Jerry, um, word of mouth, I think is going to be everything. If y'all show up and say, look, they're trying to work for this. They're trying to take action on things. Um, come be involved. Maybe they're ready to hear from new faces and, and listen to y'all. So. Um, and then also, I'm with you on the first responders. I don't think aluminum buildings is what we need for our first responders. Um, these guys put their life on the line all day, every day. I know uh, Council Member Ty and myself, we, we know what that's like. Um, we need a, a safe place for these uh, officers and firefighters to be, um, especially when you're on call for 24 hours and you're too tired to drive home. You need, a, you need a bed to sleep in for a little bit. You need a, a, a safe place to come back and, and relax after a long day. So um, Donna, I'm with you. I'm, I will push as hard as I can for something better for our first responders. So, um, but that, that's all I had. Um, thank you everybody for you know bringing your ideas, but not only your ideas, suggestions on how to accomplish those ideas. So thank you all for uh, joining us today. I, when I first was elected and came in, I fell into Grant Works. I made an informal call to see what we could do for grants or whatever. Got all confused, but the gentleman called me instead of me calling him. So, hey, that works. And Cynthia has done blood, sweat, and tears. We're getting the grant, which I had hoped would work on facilities but because of the location and the qualifications, it's that grant will be working up near the old city hall to renovate uh, underground pipes, the, uh, the well, I couldn't even think what we're gonna call that. It's been gone so long. So that is working. And while I was talking with Grant Works, I said, we really need to renovate. And I did mention the old city hall. Now, he seems to be extremely knowledgeable, and that was a year and a half ago. He said there was nothing out there right now for historical, which I thought that would be our better way in. But he would keep a look. Again, Elaine's got a better idea. Let's have a company that does our grants. And it's been a long time since I have worked with something like this. but. Most of the grant writers, if they get you a grant, you don't pay for them, quote, trying to get the grant. Should they get a grant, they administer all the pounds of paperwork on it. And then uh, normally, it used to be now, it could certainly have changed, you pay a 10% fee. That 10% covers all their paperwork, which if Cynthia can attest is a good bitch you know, stacking up. So anyhow, just for information. But I, like some of you here, I would also like to see the old city hall brought back to life. You may remember in May or June of 2021, I brought three estimates that would bring a new city hall as a renovation to the old city hall. These estimates were from 
quality contractors that I have chose not to use their name because they volunteered their time just to help us out. One was right under 200,000. One was right above. One actually said 200,000. I rounded the number to 250,000 because you never know what's going to happen in the old building. The council not only did not consider this, but made light of the estimates. I think they were good estimates. And again, using today's increase in building materials and stuff, my guess is that we might could accomplish this now in the 350 to 400,000 price range based on what they were going. And what they estimated on was a complete renovation of not only the building but the porch cleaning the rock bricks or whatever you want to call it in front of the building and going to the back which is leaked forever and remortaring the back wall and this would have been done not as much with an architect but through a planner and the contractors himself would be using a structural engineer. So I think if we decide to go with the uh, old city hall and we get good prices in that, I'm saying this could be repaid for by tagging 30% of our sales tax, which is often considered gravy, and setting it aside for this project. Now, our current budget shows 895,000 projected for, and we're going to wipe that one out because for the combined months of October through February, we have got sales tax in $527,790 and it's trending up. So if we took 30% of that, pigeonholed it over here, and started working on interim specs for the building and planning and that kind of stuff. Uh, I believe that nine offices and a small meeting room, much smaller than this room, uh, there's one physically there. Uh, well, in a kitchenette, two bathrooms and file storage could be accomplished. Again, like Elaine says, a grant would be wonderful you know, and maybe if we were doing some background stuff, it would help us get a grant. In other words, we know what we'd like, but we need dollars on the thing. And, and it would allow us to quit renting a too small building with dangerous ingress and egress and actually owning the building and the building would be ours. And this could fix us for five years. It could fix us forever. You know, who knows what the future is going to bring. Secondly, I ask that the little red building out here that we refer to finally as a senior building, that we do the electrical updates to that and do that once again and use that building for meetings, senior luncheons, and golly gee, we might even be able to vote in Rome if we have that building available. In the past, a group of citizens updated that building with top of the line appliances and actually a dishwasher in there. New cabinets were installed, the building was painted, drapes and the restroom entrance was widened to accommodate wheelchair access. Now it may not literally meet the ADA requirements, but you can get a wheelchair in there, you can turn it around and it's, it's workable. Uh, what can be done to other facilities? We have heard a reasonable idea for the police department. Can public works help update the fire station? I just think we need to work with what we have and not try to build a Taj Mahal. Anybody else? Yes, Jerry. I just have a question. Um, how much of this does the city own to, to the highway? Not no, highway. you don't go all the way down. Okay. How far back does it go? Will you turn on your mic, please, so they oh, can? I thought it was on. It goes. We do not go to the highway. It goes. I don't know what is that. 
but there's a fence. Okay, how about considering purchasing that to the highway? You have a lot of land back there. Um, all the way here to Taco Casa, you'd have parking. And then do your facilities. Quick. QT is going on that corner, so QT. Oh, they will be are. Here. Okay, now, I, I thought they weren't coming again. Okay. No, they're coming. Okay. Yeah, I was just thinking, you know, there is a, there's land back there instead of the flying whatever out here buying. So just a thought. Yeah, and, for, and then renovating the, the school. And it's expensive land. And okay. getting expensive all along the way. So we have a good location and at some point if it was sold commercially it might bring us a few dollars. That's true. Okay. Know. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. I looked back there. I just, you know, I just thought if there was, if it was everything from behind the school along the third of the highway, it would be a lot of property if you owned it. And Dad, damn it, we don't own it. So, <laughs> you know, anyone? Uh, yes, Tommy. Okay, I've been listening to everybody talk about. Um, renovating each one separately. Um, I, I see ten million dollars there. I mean, that's a lot of money, y'all. We need. <laughs> I can't believe that that people um, didn't go for the four mil, four point seven million. I think was the first year that we were going to do this, and then. Last year it was no, it was 5.7 million the first time, and then the second time it was 6.7 million. That's still cheaper than 10 million. I'm sorry, it, it's just I know people want that first street thing, but for five years, I'm sorry, that's just too much money to put into a, a one thing. For that we need what we need six different things right now police department fire department public works city hall so we need four things right why do we want to do it separately and have people all over the place instead of having everybody together in one spot which was cheaper it was more reliable it was a beautiful um setup and now we're back to separately doing everything, which to me is just a waste of money because five years, that city hall is not going to be big enough for this city. And the city, the, the council people that were in six years ago when this first started, they tried to show everybody that they were doing the cheapest and the best for the city and i guess people went around saying that i think the first time i heard rumors that it was going to be an athletic building why would we have an athletic building over here instead of a municipal building and then the second time it went through uh, the bond failed the stories about how much it was going to cost or how your taxes were gonna go up for 40 years. The math, whoever did that, the math was wrong. All they had to do is go on the web page and they could have seen how much your taxes were gonna go up for three years and then they were gonna be back down. I think you need to stop, but didn't she like it? So I'm talking so what about is, the facilities. So what is it that you want us to do? What are you thinking? That I think we should go back to We've already got the plans. Let's do the city here, everything here. I think that's what we should do. I think that's the cheapest way because you're still talking $10 million over here if you do it separately. And so what would be your, your thoughts on how to pay for that? Do a bond again, but tell the truth this time instead of giving rumors 
uh, and saying this, this go. <laughs> okay. Just, I think we should try that again because this is the cheapest way. And the council said that six years ago, that this was the cheapest way. Thank okay. You. Thank, Thank you, Tommy. Everybody has an idea and an input, and that's what this meeting is for. Let's hear. Does anybody else? Last chance. I see a hand go up. <laughs> yes, Joe. <laughs> Can't see you, but I can see from here. That's fine. I when I was talking about a public safety building with the meeting room, it would be generate. It would have a generator. So things like the winter storm, if we have senior citizens or anybody that their power goes out, we can take them to that room and that can be like their warming center or during the summer with the prices of electricity going up, that could be a cooling center. So I, I, I think going and building something brand new that with a tornado shelter, that could be one of our, uh, for the city to go there. But I think Band-Aid fixing these things are just, we're just wasting money and wasting time. So Joe, can, yes. where, where do you propose this new building would be built? Um, like I said, Rolling V or maybe somewhere on the freeway, somewhere where if we have property that is easily accessible to the city. Um, also, like I mentioned earlier, we built a big enough station, maybe EMS, Wise County can lease out part of the building and help recoup some of the costs. So, Some of the properties that you, that you were talking about um, selling, did you drive around them to see? No. no, I just pulled up Wise County and like I said, some of them might be feasible to sell, some of them might not be. So. Oh, I, I looked up when you said it was on suites. Yes. That's the uh, 10 acres for the park on Hickory. Okay. Yeah. Ballpark, what do you think we need in the way of acreage? Oh, I have no earthly idea. Okay. Like I said, it, it could be some place where you build a city hall later and you have all under, um, I know out at the airport, we're calling them com um, campuses, uh -huh. but they're all under one roof. So we don't have to, you guys don't have to drive all over town. Right. Um, I would imagine the fire department, city hall and police department all under the same roof. One common lobby and man, so. Okay, appreciate mm -hmm. it. Last call. Uh, yes, are you, Steve? My name is Steve Knight. I live at 1313 Prairie Point in Ellis, and I am on the PNZ Commission. And I'll probably flub some of this because I'm not that prepared, but I'm listening to things. I like to take things back to simplicity. And what we've got here is we've got to spend money. We've got several ways of doing it. We've got existing facilities we need to spend the money on, but we don't know how much. It's going to cost us a bunch of money just to find out how much money we've got to spend. We've got plans for a municipal complex that we ran through a bond twice. It failed twice, so it may be dead. But if you look at the way a city works, they need to come up with legit figures that everybody can believe in. And that's got to be done by the people that make money doing that. We, we paid big bucks to get finalized plans to start construction on a municipal complex. We spent a bunch of money doing that. A lot of people got upset about it. But that's what we had to have to know exactly how much to go for a bond. Then, being a city, we had to go for that bond and we had to put in contingencies. That inflated the price even more. Meanwhile, we're spending two, three years doing this and things are doubling. So I think if, if we go fixing the existing facilities, we're spending money that we could be making payments and get everything done at once and pay it out over a long, long enough time that it doesn't impact everybody that bad. That's just my simple way of trying to put where we're at. And by doing things one building at a time as we can get the money out of sales tax or something, we're going to be 30 years getting done what we could get done in three years and pay for it over 30 years. And we have something much better to do it with. Thank you very much. Thanks, you, Sam. I mean, sorry, Steve. <laughs> you know, um, with the first bond was 250000 roughly, that we wasted to get, um, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, it was 250000 to get the drawings. Um, from quorum that was wasted. Um, 
Elaine, um, I think you would be a great supervisor for the grant <laughs> to see, uh, even though you can't write them, but I think you would be a great supervisor. Uh, one thing that I suggested for the um, sidewalk right from the attorney's office in front of was selling bricks. So even if we extended it out, you know, uh, to sell bricks and papers with, you know, for residents that might bring in some to help us, um, you know, um, also, um, you know, for, there was a lot of things that you said, um, as well as the estimates. Um, I mean, I highly can't, I mean, you're just wonderful. And, you know, on all of your recommendations on the old building. So I think it would be great. So thank you. And also another thing I have to say um, with this building that going forward, um, back to the very beginning on all of this, that I am not happy with, um, I do have to say, because it is the end, when we did this building and whenever it was posted, right before all this with the rats coming in, and then we named it after one of the dearest ladies in this town after her, it should have waited. We should have waited until we had a new building and had a, you know, the, the uh, ribbons, cut it, and then named it after Marie Moore, not after this old building with the, you know, uh, uh, asbestos and everything coming in. So I'm pretty disappointed. So, well, I, I would ask you to think about this. How old is Marie? 94. So but, do you think that maybe we were afraid that she could go at any time and we wanted her to have that recognition? I would think that whatever we do, if we build a different facility than this, then the, this meeting room, this community room, if we relocate the community room, the name goes with it. It is not, uh, that, I mean, we haven't taken a vote on that, but that is my definite opinion that if this is the community room and we renovate it and we stay here, then it's gonna be still her name. If for some reason we decide that's not the path we're gonna take and let's just, you know, this is just all, uh, you know, clouds in the sky here. But if we were to get property from some of the developers, one of the developers, and rebuild and had a like type meeting location, in my opinion, it would still be Marie's name on it. Yes, ma'am. But whenever I spoke to her afterwards, she got tears in her eyes and she said, I did not want my name named after that. I was not asked. I was told my name was going to be put on it. And then when I spoke to her two weeks ago at a senior citizen luncheon, she says, that's not the building I wanted my name on. And it was, it was heartfelt, you know, and you're sitting there and you looked at her and you, she said, I did not want my name on that building. And I was told, and I said, I'm so sorry that we did that to you. Well, I'm sorry. Okay, she let's go back to facilities. Uh, that is a facility, but that's kind of off the record. Okay, this is the very, very last call. No, I have something to say. Um, the money that we used for to prepare to do the old school, it was not wasted because it was what we legally had to do. We had to go through that process. Is that correct? You're talking about getting the plans. Yes. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah so we had to it, know it's, what we wanted. It, it's not wasted if that's what and we're thinking is happening. And it's still our plans. So the second thing, I'm talking about the old school. Yeah, was, but it's still our plan. In other words, we own the plans. Right, right. Okay, the second thing is the problem with our quotes is we have the mayor saying that it's going to cost 400000 and we have our facilities saying it's going to cost 756000 So we have a split. If we have the mayor not on board with what the staff is saying is going to cost, then we have issues with, with that problem. And it goes back to Council Member Eason saying we need confidence in these quotes. I, I don't know how else to 
how well, else to do and, it. If, if we're not going to be all on board, then it's not going to work. And I offered these, and I was made light of Facebook lit up. Oh, there's no way. Joanne used her friends or whatever. I did not use friends. I did not give you guys the names because they were three competent contractors that were giving informal estimates. I mean, like 15 minutes in the building, that's not a firm estimate. But y'all didn't want to try it. So that's all I'm saying. I don't think it's that they didn't want to try it. They needed more information and you would not give it to them. Not even a phone number contact or something where they could say, okay, where are you coming up with this $250,000 that you can do that for? Let us see how this can be accomplished. They weren't saying no, they were saying show us and you wouldn't. Oh, well, Kathy, I am so sorry, but I told the people I would not involve them. We could have gone out with bids We'd have to go through the planning and all of that, and we would have seen what came in. But anyhow, but let's end this meeting unless someone else has anything else. Okay, we're going to adjourn, and I promised Kathy I would read this flyer that Valerie Smith has put out. Our meeting officially is over, and Tuesday night, 6 p.m., to 7.30 p.m. in Humble Hall, there is a candidate meet and greet. Come meet your candidates running for City of Rome Mayor, Rome City Council, and Northwest Independent School District. Discuss questions that are important to you and the community. Food and beverages will be there, so that should get more of us going. Does everybody know where Humble Hall is? Anybody want to know? It's 215 County Road 4651. Okay, and if Aurora may or may not, yeah, I know they were trying to get somebody. Oh, okay. Okay. So. Uh, Hey, and there's, according to, according to Miss Kathy, there's barbecue there also. So we'll see you all there. Thank you all for coming. Eat cookies. Yes, take some of the cookies.